Greetings to all and welcome to this Reconnect episode for today. Dear friends, we members of the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ, you know, we're so very thankful to God that He continues to provide us with the needed guidance and, and, and direction as we continue to navigate through the trials and hardships that beleaguer society in our times. The Iglesia de Cristo Church Administration, under the leadership of our Executive Minister, Brother Eduardo V. Manalo, always shares with us the words of God to use always as our guidance in life so we could stay connected to the abundant grace God provides to His people. And dear friends, God's words provide us hope provide us inspiration and the spiritual strength that enables us to joyfully serve God, no matter what will transpire or happen in life. Beloved viewers, we want that also for you. We want for you to also experience the reconnection with our Almighty God and have that connection every day of your life. We truly want you to experience the reconnection with our Almighty God every day of your life. But, dear friends, there are important things that everyone must understand first. Like, you know, there may be some who would want to say, I already belong to a church. And all Christian churches are all the same anyway, right? In case you're wondering what this church is all about, how this church is different. Is it the same as all other churches that maybe you say that you have been to in the past? Let's take a look at this short video. The Bible study that really made me like, okay, this is where I need to be, it was the one about the true church. And that, that was like, okay, this is the true church because it says it right there in the Bible. And this is where I need to be. I need to be in the true church. I know I have salvation. Did you know that the Bible talks about a true church? Maybe it never crossed your mind. Or maybe you never considered it. Tawanda certainly didn't. It was pretty much go to church and as long as you go to church and have faith in um God and Jesus, um, you'll be, you'll have your salvation in the end. And so I started going to Bible study and I was like, okay, that's not all true. <laughs> I, I need to be in the, the true church to have salvation. One thing that stuck out to, about that very first lesson that I heard was that the minister kept on saying that the Iglesia Ni Cristo is the true church, the only true church. And that's something that I, I was thinking, well, at least the church, this church is being honest about that, about them saying that. But don't take our word for it. Investigate it for yourself. They did. I asked a lot of questions and um, the minister was very patient with me and read the Bible and showed me passages. And I remember asking him, if this is the true church, how are there so many miracles happening around the world? You know, from other ministers, preachers, churches. And I remember he read the verse was Matthew 24, 24. And I remember he read that and I was like, wow, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And um, from that day forth, I, started attending more Bible studies. I, I remember sitting there and listening to every word and just, I, I just start bawling with the tears because I felt shocked that my mother had all my life taught me that all these things were okay. And I'm like, it was the realization that all those feelings I had were right, that she was wrong and I had been being taught the wrong way. While I was reading and learning more about the church, I realized that that there's only one true God, as versus to many other churches, you, there's so many gods, um, but there's only one true church and there's only one God. 
which is the Father in heaven and, and our Lord Jesus Christ is the mediator. So that was really important to know the truth. You may never have considered it, but if you've been attending a church all your life, wouldn't you want to know you were going to the one that is true? And it was after that that I felt like, hey, this church, this is different. This church is actually teaching the true teachings from the Bible because it wasn't complicated to understand. And that's what made me want to continue. And that's what I, I, when I realized this is where God wants me to be. Set up a time to speak with a minister in the Church of Christ and discover the answers you need to hear. As you just saw there, dear friends, there are many people who have, they've, they've never even thought about a true church. Why? Because they were raised to believe that all churches were the same. And we know you probably have a lot of questions. So stay with us right here in our study now, because before we, and even before we go any, any further, there's a warning, a vital warning that the Bible provides us. And it has to do with just going along with the, any church without really understanding and investigating as well what they really believe in. So what is this biblical warning? It's recorded here in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse, verse 9. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Dear friends, what does the Bible teach us? It's one of, and it's one of the many dangers in life nowadays. Well, th th these are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He warned that worship offered to the Lord would be in vain. When? How would it be in vain or be useless? He said, if it's teaching as doctrines, the commandments of men. If then one is teaching the commandments of man as the uh, format of worship or as the foundation of worship, then it becomes useless. No one would want their services that he intends to give glory to God to simply end up in vain. Nobody would want that. That's dangerous. Well, what if people would respond though? What if somebody would say, well, I, I love God and be, I therefore believe that my worship would be acceptable to God. He wouldn't just turn me away. He, he, they believe that God would find their worship worthy because they love him. That kind of thinking is with many people, right? Probably you know someone, huh? Think of it for a second. Do you know someone who has that way of thinking? Oh, my worship, my service to God is okay because anyway, God knows that I love him. They have been convinced that professing one's love for God is all that God is looking for. But is it? Let's ask the Lord himself. Will God accept all people's expression of love for him and therefore accept also the, their worship? Let's, let's go to the word of God here in the Holy Bible. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 31 answers. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people and they hear your words, but they do not do them. For with their mouth, they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own gain. Clearly, dear friends, although there may be many people, maybe you know some, that they're convinced that all they need to do is to express their love for God and then, God will automatically find their services rendered to him in whatever way, in whatever format. They believe they would, God is like as if he's forced to accept that worship because they love him. But does God agree with that way of thinking? Clearly, he does not. Why are we so sure? Well, what did God himself, himself say? He said, my they, they do not do them. They're with their mouth they show much love. It's just with their mouth. They came. They heard his words. But what did he say? They're not willing to do them, not willing to obey. And are there really many people who think this way and believe this way? 
let's take a, a moment and view this video clip and let's listen to some of their quotes. I am a Christian, that is my faith. I'm not asking you to be a Christian. If you want to be one, I can show you how. <laughs> but it is not required. I'm just a Christian everything. Uh huh. I now have given my life to Jesus Christ and I work for God. I'm Protestant, I'm Presbyterian, which means something. There you have it. We heard what they were saying in that video clip. Dear friends, who is it therefore that God is truly looking for? Whose worship will God actually find acceptable? If it's not just any kind of worship, any kind of belief, any kind of format of worship and such things as that, then what? In the book of John, chapter 4, John 4, let's read verse 23 where it says, But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Your friends, whose worship would be found worthy in God's eyes? He answered that how? Those that are, what did, what did the Lord call them? True worshipers, not just any worshipers. And you know the fact that he pointed out that there are true worshipers already teaches us there are false worshipers. And, and, and this is not just optional. This is not just a suggestion. This is whom the Father is looking for. He is seeking for true worshipers to offer true worship. Dear friends, the true God is looking for the true worshipers to worship in the true way and to worship the true God. Do you want your worship to be worthy in the sight of God? If your answer is yes, then what is it that you will be willing to do? Let's go back to John chapter 4 where we were just reading from the words of our Lord. We read 23. Let's go ahead to 24. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. It's clearly required by God then, dear friends, to worship him in truth. Truth is, is the important thing there. So as to establish what worship is acceptable to him, it's not false worship. False worship will not make anyone worthy in God's sight. So, what's the truth that will serve as the basis of one's worship, making it, therefore, acceptable to God? Maybe many people will just say, this is the truth, that's the truth. What is the truth that will make one's worship acceptable to God? What worship will be true worship? The worship that is based upon the truth. John 17, 17, that truth is, I quote, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. True worship that God loves, true worship that is done based upon the truth. And what is that truth? The word of God is truth according to Jesus. So those who offer to God worship but the worship is based upon the doctrines or the teachings and the opinions of people instead of the words of God himself, what happens? They, they offer worship. It may be dedicated to their worship. Consider that their worship is important in their life, but on God's side, that worship is without any value. Remembering what the Lord Jesus said in the first verse that we read. He said, in vain they worship, teaching as doctrines and commandments of men. It's not rooted in the truth, therefore, and thus that worship that is not rooted in the truth, not rooted in the words of God here in the Bible, is useless to offer it to God, for he won't find it acceptable. They are wasting their opportunity to please God. Before we continue our study, dear friends, I want to introduce you to a man who, well, he thought he was doing everything he was supposed to be doing. 
And he was believing what most people, or let's say what many people believe when it comes to worshiping God. But as you're about to see, you're, you're, going, uh, you're, you're going to hear uh, how he went along with popular beliefs and how that nearly cost him his salvation. Here's what he says about this. My name is Martin Castillo. I am 47 years old. I was born and raised in Wailuku, Maui. I am Portuguese Filipino. My stepdad was in the military. He was the Catholic. We went to Mass maybe once a month and on Christmas Eve. I went through their Bible studies. I even became a altar boy at a point. I did those things because that's what my parents wanted me to do. My mom took us to two different churches during that time. That church, it was a moving church. I think we were there maybe a year or two. We had to help put up the tent. We had to uh, set up the sound equipment. There was a female pastor and a male pastor. It was one of those churches where you, you could dance around. For me, it wasn't really faith. It was, I guess, bonding to see other people you know, believe in God and, or believe in Jesus Christ. I was introduced into the Church of Christ by a close family relative. He kept asking me to come to a worship service. I said, no, I'm okay. And then eventually I, I gave in and I said, okay, I'll come. I was at first surprised because the sisters would sit on one side and the brothers would sit on one side. And I thought that was strange at the time. I kept going back to the Church of Christ because something felt different. I just remember even going to Bible studies and the minister, you know, when he would teach, he would teach from the Bible. He would even show you the verses. You could see the truth, not just being told it. The lessons are geared towards understanding the Bible because you can read it like a book and you don't understand it. And by going through the Bible studies, you get to learn the things that were wrong in my previous religions, like you know why the Catholic Church uses the big cross in the front and statues of different apostles around the church, Mother Mary. The only one that should be worshiped is our Almighty Father. All that stuff played into my thinking of where this is the one, this is the true church, the Church of Christ. So dear friends, uh, Brother Martin Castillo, well, he's just one of so many people who have joined the Church of Christ, the Iglesia Ni Cristo after having been led astray by others in, in, in so many different kinds of false religions. And as you just heard, Brother Martin was devoted in his previous religions that he was part of, which is what many people do today in their own respective churches. So the question then we pose together now is this. So is then devotion in a church, maybe a church that you grew up in or whatever, is just having devotion therein enough? We turn again to the Holy Bible, and this time in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses uh, 2 and 3, wherein it says, I can assure you that they are deeply devoted to God, but 
their devotion is not based on true knowledge. They have not known the way in which God puts people right with himself. And instead, they have tried to set up their own way. And so, they did not submit themselves to God's way of putting people right. What does the Bible say, dear friends, to those that may have the errant way of thinking that or supposing that their devotion to God will automatically put them right with God and would lead them to salvation, lead them to eternal life, lead them to offer worship he has to find acceptable? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did God say here through the Apostle Paul? Their devotion is not based on true knowledge. So what did they do? Because they did not yet have the true knowledge. Answer of the Bible. They set up their own way. What did they not do? They did not submit themselves to God's way. They just came up with their own. Let's do this in worship. Let's do that in worship. Let's believe this. Let's believe that. If it's not founded upon the truth here in the Bible, that belief, that worship is without value to God. But let's continue uh, uh, in investigating this further. Because what if someone would go one step further and, and say something like, well, I know God and God knows me. He knows me, I'll be fine. What proves, dear friends, what proves that a person really does know God? Just their announcement of it or something like that? Oh, no, no. First, uh, first John chapter 2, let's, let's take a look at what uh, the Bible's response is here in verse uh, 3. We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. That's the truth. It's the word of God. So a person can say all they want that, I know God, he knows me, I'm good, we're, we're, we're good. They can say they know God and be very sincere about that. But if they are unwilling to follow the Lord's command, well, what does the Bible say? We know that we have come to know him. If. That's conditional, right? If. If what? If we keep his commands. So if they say they know God, what they are saying is not true. If they have not uh, become willing to follow the Lord's commands and instructions. And remember, what is the only truth that's deemed worthy to God. Let's again allow the Bible to, uh, to answer that again. This time as it is uh, written in the words of Apostle Paul to the uh, Romans. In uh, Romans chapter 1, uh, let's listen to verse uh, 16 and uh, 17. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. For everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So dear friends, what is the only truth then that matters? The truth that God deems worthy in his sight, of course. And what is that? It's that which is rooted in the gospel. Why? What did we read? The gospel is what? The power of God to salvation. If then one is in a religious faith, dear friends, that is not true, and it's worshiping based on uh, the ideas and opinions of people, not upon the gospel of truth, then if you are in that kind of a religious faith, it's not founded from the gospel, nor the teachings of God, the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, the teachings of the apostles that are all written here. And then that person tries their best to perform some kind of intended service to God. They will end up sorely disappointed. 
What else? That person, therefore, can, can never be found acceptable to God in that condition. In fact, what, what needs to be understood, dear friends, is this. What will a person's spoken or declared love for God, what will make that so-called love for God genuine? What makes it real? Allow me to cite once again here from the Holy Scriptures, this time the writings of Apostle John, 1 John chapter, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse eight, 18. It says, uh, it says this, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. We must be willing then, dear friends, to show our love for God. Agreed? But how? Just declaring it and then just following whatever uh, format of loving God, whatever format of worshiping God that someone will just speak from their own mind? No. The true love for God is made not with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Actions. True actions. So we've already learned in the earlier verses that we have read together. The truth is the, is the words of God contained in the gospel, taught by our Lord Jesus Christ, taught also by his apostles, and which we regularly receive here inside the church of Christ. So what does the Lord God say concerning those who would just say that they love him, but are not willing yet? Huh? I want to say that yet, because we're hopeful for all of the viewers watching our program. They say that, they, that you love God, but if you have not yet obeyed the truth that is revealed in the gospel, what would a person that clung to their stubborn resistance of God's instructions, what, what would the Lord consider us then if that was what, we, what our way of thinking was? What would God consider a person who in stubbornly insisted upon saying, no, oh, God knows me, God loves me. But they're not willing to obey all his instructions and commands. The answer of the, of the Lord God himself is recorded here in Titus. I quote from the Holy Bible, uh, Titus chapter 1. And uh, what we'll read here is uh, Titus 1.16. It says, it says this. They pretend to know God, but deny him with their deeds. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. What does the Lord call them? He considers them pretenders. Why do we say that? Well, he, he said it. He said, they pretend to know God, just like so many people. I know God. He knows me. I love God. God knows I love him. They say all kinds of, uh, of very flattering things. But God says they are pretending. They are pretending to know God. What else did he acknowledge, though? He said, they are detestable. Why did he say that? He said, they're disobedient. What was the result? They become what? Unfit for doing anything good. They're not fit for doing anything good. They may think they're doing good. They may try to do something that they believe is good. But he said, they're not fit to do anything good. Jesus said in the earlier verse, they could even worship, but that worship is in vain, without any value. Why? They are pretending to know God, but are denying him with their actions. How is it that they're denying him with their actions. They're not following the gospel, not following the Lord's instructions on what to do or what to obey when worshiping him. So their worship would be acceptable to him. If disobeyed, that's rendering their uh, service to God unacceptable. What did, they dis what did they disobey? Because maybe somebody would say, I didn't disobey. What is it that they are so resistant to obeying? We turn to uh, the book of John, chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. Anyone who comes into the fold through me 
shall be safe. What command was then be followed by anyone, dear friends, that wants to be safe, especially when it comes to being safe and, or saved on the upcoming day of judgment, when this world will be totally destroyed? Jesus answered that by saying, anyone who wants to be saved, what, what did he say? They will come into the fold. And what is that fold into which people should enter? Thus qualifying themselves as one who is obedient. Obedient to the instruction of Jesus when he said, anyone who enters into this fold through me, they're the ones that will be safe. Not just someone who's just declaring it on their own. They followed Christ, entered into that fold, thus rendering, therefore, the services from there in to be acceptable. In the eyes of the Lord. What, what is that fold that Jesus is instructing all people to, uh, to enter? That, that fold, that assembly of sheep or followers are identified. How? Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers. To feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. The viewers, what is that fold or flock that Jesus instructed all people to enter? That flock is the church. What church? Just any church? No, he made very clear here. The church of Christ, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, the viewers. Have you obeyed this teaching of the Lord yet? Are you already inside the flock? Then your worship can be acceptable to the Lord. Are you inside the church for which Jesus Christ shed his blood? So dear friends, we extend to you our most sincere invitation to continue listening to the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ here in the Iglesia Ni Cristo, the Church of Christ. Here below, is a link to a directory of all our houses of worship around the world. So wherever you may be viewing this program, you can find the one that is nearest to your own place. Continue to review all of the teachings that we believe in. You can check some of them at incmedia.org. Be sure to tune in to INC TV and subscribe to the Iglesia Ni Cristo Evangelical Mission YouTube page for more inspiring Christian videos, as well as the INC Media app. We thank you for joining us in this program, Reconnect. We thank you for accepting the invitation that brought you here to this program. Continue your journey. Continue looking at the Iglesia Ni Cristo, where here you will find the truth and true and acceptable worship to God. Please join us in a closing prayer. Almighty Father, dear Lord, we thank you so much for bringing all of our guests to view this program today. Dear God, we've tried our best to share your important truths with them all. May you be the one, O oh Lord, to write your words deep within their heart. May you be the one, O oh God, to inspire them to return and continue studying with us. Help them to overcome personal trials in their life, persecutions from anyone who will try to hinder them. Help them along their way, O oh dear God. And please, may the day come we will see them join with us here inside your holy church. Lord Jesus, it's our only mediator to the Father. Please bring our requests to him. Ask him to bless all of us. Ask him to bless our visitors joining our study. Ask him, Lord Jesus, to open the eyes of their understanding, that they may see the importance of serving you and the Father properly. Lord God, please continue to safeguard the church administration so that we may remain always on the path of righteousness, guided and directed by your holy will. We pray for this. We ask your mercy to us all in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.